I don't see any FMC from Cameroon, Cameroon. standing toe to toe. Oh. So when you hear me saying she's okay, okay. Mm. I'm not disrespecting her. You know, you know, you know, they are fond of thinking. Welcome to another edition of Hall of Fame Special Debate. Now, honey, I have good news for you. This will be happening every month, once a month, yes. We'll be talking to five minds on music stakeholders, entertainers, celebrities, and all whatnot. So today, just like every other edition, honey, we'll be talking about the Cameroon entertainment industry. Now, we have a lot of genres of music. New genres keep on popping every day. But now, we do not know the history of Cameroon music. We don't know who started it, what happened, how many genres were there, you know? Like, how was music produced? Use back then. I bet you want to know. You want to know about all the artists who existed from the 1970s, 1980s, right now to the 2000s. So you can only find out if you stick with us. You're watching Hall of Fame Special Debate. I'm your girl, Dani Younger. Don't go anywhere. We have a lot in store for you. On to this edition. We'll be right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. That was an amazing collaboration between Matt Zambo and Harry and Joe. And we're looking at Malia Mamuto, yes? Now, back then, music was so, so fascinating. That's for the fact that there wasn't the presence of internet and streaming platforms. They were still able to market all of the songs, like both nationally and internationally. We don't know how they did it, but fortunately for us, we have three amazing gentlemen in the building. Yes, for now, we're going to be introducing two of them. So I'm going to start with my right, since this is my, my strong hand. And uh, he is a music stakeholder, an executive, an entrepreneur, an artist manager. He is a critic. In fact, it's a handful. I'm talking about Mr. Jules Mia. Hello. Hi. How are I'm good. Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm you should fine. be the one with your ass. <laughs> I know, I should be asking you. Be asking should be asking you. Okay, cool. Um, you're welcome to the program. Thank you I, for it, coming. My pleasure. It's always a pleasure participating in the upliftment of um, the industry. Okay. Anything that has to do with entertainment mm. and game. You look good though. It's, it's just a head for me. Like it's really attractive. It's so shiny. Ah, you're making me shine. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, and on my leg is me. Okay, so he is a mentor, he's my teacher, yes, uh, that's so true, and he's a cook, an entrepreneur, he's equally an actor, an award-winning, let me add that part before he gets angry, an award-winning actor, I'm talking about Mr. Alene Menget, hello, Ni. Hello. How are you? Fine, thank you. He's a shit for me, though. <laughs> it's, just, it's just, I don't know, you care to share? I think it's good to go with my outfit. Yeah? No? Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Um, <laughs> uh, the way I would have preferred to be introduced today is uh, uh, Pioneer Radio Animator, Pioneer okay. TV Animator, because uh, when we did radio animation was for the artists. Okay. And also uh, former band manager. Oh. You know, musician at those days mm -hmm. in the band. So okay. I came here for music and I wanted to stay on that, that okay. line. Okay. Yeah. So, so we're talking music today. Mm. Yes. Now talking about music, ladies and gentlemen, our theme of today's um, debate is the evolution of the Cameroon music or Cameroonian music. And of course, we'll be looking the way forward in our entertainment industry. A lot of things are happening. You know, we keep seeing our artists. We feel like they're making a lot of mistakes. We don't just know how to fix it. I, as a presenter, I want to grow, but I don't know how it's done. And I feel like a lot of you out there equally want to know what really happened in the past, right? So I'm going to start with uh, Mr. Alain. Right, sir. Now let's talk about the evolution of Cameroon music. Could you give us the background history? Okay, okay, uh, that's coming to me. Um, uh, we could be divided into five tiers, okay. five serious tiers. You can't talk about Cameroon music without definitely uh, comparing it with African music because okay. uh, there's some people who went right international at level of African and world music mm -hmm. in that genre. First tier of Cameroon music falls within the range of Manu Dibango, Bebe Black. Okay. Uh, those are those people who were there. But then, and other bands like Prince Nico Barga, who was a servant here and was named Barga if he was from Nigeria. And they formed a band. Now, music in those days used to be in bands and played in particular places like Fela had his uh, uh, 
uh, Calcutta Republic, which the band was, people moved to these places because they would play music there. Okay. That's how like, people got to be a beer band in Kumba, mm -hmm. because there was a big band there. And uh, there were bands all over Africa. Now, out of bands, you had those bands who sang before the independent period, as before 1960. Mm -hmm. You had Roshiro, Franco, okay, you had yes. Butabule okay. in, in the Congos. That's why Congo was hitting down mm -hmm. in South Africa. You had, uh, 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 you had, uh, um, the, 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 the trumpetist, I'll get his name, the, who later on got married to Maria Makeba. Um, then in Cameroon, the band were local, mm -hmm. but that was the first year before independence. Okay. I'm talking about Huma Sakela. Yeah, Huma Sakela. In yeah. South Africa. Mm -hmm. Now, in Cameroon, when it started after the bands, which were everywhere, that's when the music was hot, just after independence, you had to move to a particular place to enjoy music that was created by bands. Okay. Bands that moved throughout Africa, the bands left Cameroon, went to Nigeria, mm -hmm. and they did their tours and came back. Mm -hmm. I gave you an example of uh, a Nigerian who came to Cameroon, and yeah. he was a cleaner in the bar, and uh, because he had to change his name, that's why he's called Mbarga. Because he was okay. working for Mbarga. So they had given a Cameroonian passport to Mbarga name. That's how I got there. Okay. After the bands, after independence, music came out now with uh, Manu Dibango, mm -hmm. who immediately he started with international and was representing Cameroon. That's why a lot of Cameroon music was exported to Paris. Okay. Then. So now, that's the second, first year band, second year is Manu Dibango, which are the leaders there. Mm -hmm. And the second year part of music, Baby Black, you have um, other people like uh, Mesengo Francois, who has still today has the amount of music in Cameroon. Then you had um, uh, other artists like um, Bazo, mm -hmm. the Bazo, how do they call him? Um, who played the mm -hmm. uh, 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 Cameroon Fancy Airlines? Cameroon Airlines. Uh, yes, you had them. Who, but who? Uh, that's uh, Dina Bell and all that. No, no, Dina, Dina Bell falls Bazo. in the second tier too. I'm talking about the man who shines, he went to the United States and uh, I'll get to him. Oh, now we got to hear about yeah, him. Yeah, so no, no, he did a lot of things. He okay. created a certain, uh, mm. he could play Cameroon Airlines song, I'll get to him. Mm. He's in Douala right now. Mm -hmm. mm. Now, who created uh, the, 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 the great uh, uh, Beninois singer today? Uh, it can be Brian. It can be Brian. Mm. So those are the, thank you very much, you brought mm. somebody there. So okay. that's the second tier music. Okay. Second tier music had lots of folks. That's when Africa, mm -hmm. West Africa, Central mm -hmm. Africa depended on Cameroon music. Okay. Yeah. Because a brand had developed in the name of Makusa, which was the tongue of the Dwellers mixed with yeah. infiltration of English and Pidgin mm -hmm. that had brought it, that been brought in by the British. Mm -hmm. And it was the main music in Africa in, okay. this, in, in the early 80s. Okay, Mr. Zhu, yeah. you would like to add to it? Yeah, basically just to add more flesh to what Alena was saying, is um, <clears throat> like, like, like the, the, the cream of Cameroon music start, started actually in the 60s because we were influenced by Congolese music. Oh. Yes, initially we were influenced by Congolese rumba. Mm -hmm. Like people like Franco, OK Jazz, in the early, mm -hmm. early 50s, late 50s. Mm -hmm. So we had uh, artists like Charles Lebe, uh, who did Muta Benama. That was later song by uh, Bebe Manga. Mm -hmm. Then we had uh, there this other person that wrote, uh, Ebana Manfred, that wrote Amio. Ebana Manfred, yeah. yeah, yeah Ebana yeah. Manfred is the author of Amio. That's, those are African hit songs. Okay, yeah. And so. then you had Anne Marinze, mm -hmm. yeah, in the early mm -hmm. 60s. Then you had uh, Mad Zambo, mm -hmm. we just watched now, that, that did Avectoire. Those are, but I'm talking Pan African hit songs in yeah. the 60s, 70s. Okay. And then with Manu Di Bangona, that came and took it to a whole other so level. To a different level. To a whole other level. Then yeah. after the Manu era, then you had the Black Steel. You had Ekambi, Ekambi yeah, Bia. Yeah. Um, yeah. How did they call him again? Uh, the other person that was lame. Uh, 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 is it No, 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 no. Ebalotti. Ebalotti. Okay. Yeah, Ebalotti did a fantastic job okay. after the Manu era. Okay. So Ebua, it can be. Mm -hmm. Then now you have the likes of the Black Steel, mm -hmm. okay. Toto Guillaume, mm -hmm. and uh, Emi Kange, mm -hmm. and uh, Koti Francois, the late Koti Francois. Yeah. Okay. Then before, then after, was well, the 80s is when no, can. Yeah, the history told you we took it after the dependence, we took it from Rumba. Yeah, from Rumba. Okay. But by the 80s, Mm -hmm. The former president had brought in Manu Dibango and yeah. when they were about launching the television in 1988 mm -hmm. and they moved yeah. all through the re regions and selected artists and different kind of music for a, a song, for, for, for mm -hmm. music. Mm -hmm. the, the, the state was promoting, the state wanted mm -hmm. to, to, to create songs. In Bameda it was um, 
You had Francis Dom. Francis Dom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they, they selected one artist from mm-hmm. each region mm-hmm. by their province. In South West or Sami Mafani. Yeah, Manu. Uh, mm-hmm. they Manu. So, now, Amazing. At that particular period, we beat the Romba. Makusa was better yeah. than Romba. Yeah. Romba was totally out. Okay. Yes, Makusa was the only thing existing in Central Africa. Okay. As and most music. parts of Africa. That's so, why yeah. Nigerians still find it difficult to differentiate yeah. between M- uh, Dombolo, yeah. uh, Kupé de Cali, they call mm. it Makosa. They call oh. everything That's that came from how Nigeria impactful yeah. from Makosa was. outside mm-hmm. Makosa. Mm. Okay. I want us to talk on the, these two genres. You've been talking about Makosa, Makosa. I want us to talk about the origin of Bikosé. You know? Why is it from? Because it is it's, because it's traditional music that moved. One thing that has to be clear: mm-hmm. Makosa, because they are urban, they are, they are urban, urban music from Cameroon. Okay. Yeah, because a lot of people think urban music just started now. Mm-hmm. Makosa is a form of urban music because it's a blend of local rhythms used with modern instruments, yeah. using uh, they also use uh, other chord progressions from uh, um, soul. Um, uh, uh, um, rumba. Yeah. So, so it's a it's a, it's a fusion based music. Okay. So that's why it's urban. It's, it's an urban sound. Mm-hmm. So the urban thing did not start with the new generation. Okay. So the Bendekas and Code, all of them did urban music. Mm-hmm. So, yes. so wait, um, um, Mr. Leno, before I get to you, I just want to ask this question. Back then, who mm-hmm. was at the forefront of Bikusi? Because we Bikusi, know that uh, Bikusi became mainstream in Cameroon in the in the seventies with uh, by in the early seventies by a guy known, known as Messi Mate. Okay. Yes, you had Macy Martin was a, was a person that actually brought it to limelight. Mm-hmm. Then you had uh, Esui Sumba. Mm-hmm. But Esui Sumba was more of a slow kind of guy. Yeah. Then now in the 80s, the biggest Bikusi song that like blew was mm-hmm. Governor Dinga Sumba. Okay. That came with uh, Naya Naya. Then mm-hmm. after Governor, you had the Ted Boulez. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, Mr. Lene, still on the history of Kumar music, I want us to talk about, or I want you <laughs> to talk about this brand, this band, uh, the Ted Boulez Cameroon. I saw some of the music, it just fascinates me. The fact that yeah. they get to draw the neon lights on your faces, they were so crazy. Tell us yeah, more about the, them. The, I usually call them the head boys. Yeah. The, the, okay. Actually, we could see, like he said, it's traditional. It's just like the local music in your village. Mm-hmm. But they now took Catch it to that. the studio. Yeah. Okay. Because okay. we have lots of music that we've not taken to the studio yeah. here. Mm-hmm. He went to the studio and walked here. Okay. But now, how did he go international? This band just came with the hairstyle mm-hmm. and decided to do an international tour. Yeah. The Ted Boulay, now when they went dry, they realized the world loved them. Mm-hmm. And with the successes that Ted Boulay made, mm-hmm. they came back home and lots of other traditional artists went to the studio. That's why there was a boom we could see that particular yeah. period. Okay, yeah. amazing. Now, um, talking about going to the studio productions. Today we have the likes of Phil Bills and K, and, um, K Master K. Yes, he's a producer, Salatino, or whatnot. Back then, who were the prominent producers? And, they were, and they were not names like prominent producers. Okay. They had studios like Bell Pen that had mm-hmm. only four track machine mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and most of the songs before independence were played at uh, radio, radio Yaoundé. Radio Yaoundé the oh. when they finished the radio in the night they went and played okay yeah then mm-hmm. in the morning they read news mm-hmm. so the studios were not there now talking about producers there were no names like producer producers then were people who put uh, money executive producers yeah, executive oh. producer. we had arrangers, arrangers. arrangers. yes and yes. arrangers were not the most important people. They were the finalists of music. Mm-hmm. In those days, every music was being played by an artist. That's why we call it music. Okay. It was not programmed. Mm. The computer didn't do anything. Okay. They had to get a bassist, mm-hmm. which would come and play. Mm-hmm. Cameroon has had the best bassist in Africa. Mm-hmm. The best you would think of. They played even with uh, Bob Marley and the rest. Then you get a rhythmist who will come and play. Then you get a solist mm-hmm. who will come and play. They will get the ambiance who is a pianist who will come and play. Mm-hmm. Now, very few people will know all those who played, but Cameroon was lucky to have two very beautiful players, Toto Guillaume and... Uh, yeah, you had Toto Guillaume. Toto Guillaume and... Uh, and and uh, in terms of arrangement, you had Toto. You had Toto Guillaume, you had Ebeni Dona Wesley. Okay. Those, are, those, are, those were the most prominent. Then mm-hmm. they went abroad. Then uh, Makosa became actually global because that's why I say Makosa is an urban song because yeah. one of the most, uh, those that contributed the most to Makosa were the Kasaf, Jacob de Vario and Nemo. Mm-hmm. They did most of the arrangements like the Bendekas, yeah. the uh, Guido Bears, the Makosas of the 80s mm-hmm. was arranged by uh, uh, de Vario and, and Nemo. Okay. Yeah. So I- that's why there's that Caribbean influence. In the, in the Makosa sound back mm-hmm. there. Yeah. Now let's talk about the role of uh, West Mariko. How did he influence our Cameroon music? What was I, his role? I don't think it influenced Cameroon mm-hmm. music. Yeah. He was one 
person who did a traditional yeah. method mixed in the Western beats. Okay. That is where we wanted a breakthrough because our music was local. Mm -hmm. The white man didn't understand it because he didn't get the the tum tum cha <laughs> which, which, which yeah. sells to yeah. today. I don't know what's wrong with it. Okay. That's how Nigerians at a certain point mm -hmm. blew because at one point they had their own artists who converted high life into that beat. So oh. Madiko became successful because he converted an African traditional tongue into mm -hmm. that beat. Mm -hmm. Oh. It was his success. It didn't okay. influence anything in Makusa. Mm -hmm. He may have built Cameroon as a bundle out there yeah. that, okay, there's a Cameroonian artist who's doing well with a soft background song that they have never heard before mm -hmm. and he succeeded in putting it in international beats. Mariko okay. worked with this guy known as, um, with a music producer known as Michel Sanchez. Michel Sanchez is the one who actually packaged the sound, who produced the sound. Mm -hmm. And Michel Sanchez is a, is a French guy okay. who understands uh, Western pop, mm -hmm. so he just fused uh, traditional African sounds with Western pop music. Oh. That's how it worked okay. internationally. Yeah, he okay. didn't only work with Manu Dibango. That particular mm -hmm. period, you had uh, uh, Yusundu who worked with yeah, uh, Yusundu and uh, with, uh, with Nene Sheri. That's how that, they call mm -hmm. it. They call that kind of music world Kali, music. Somewhere okay. in the north of Africa yeah. came with the, yeah, the, the Arab invasion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kali, still in the western beat yeah. that I started then mm -hmm. some few guys in South Africa started transforming Zulu mm -hmm. okay Zulu music into that mm -hmm. beat yeah so we have a problem and mm -hmm. the problem will get there is because yeah. we have yeah. not transformed yet yeah. okay Kusa yeah. before we get beat, yeah. Yeah, don't make us roll faster than our shadows yeah um I wanted to talk about that industry back then you know um how was it, how would you describe it the industry Kamuna has always had a plethora of talents you mm -hmm. understand? The, yeah. the, the, I think the major variable is the evolution of media. Okay. And I think we, we're not used to the new variables. That's why we are, we are still running mm -hmm. here and everything. But back then, the, the, everything was highly centralized. Okay. It was easy. You just had to go on air. Like Ted Boulez, after they just had to go. It was after Today for Jim that they became popular. It was just a TV show. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, it was on Saturdays, hosted yeah. by Elvis Kemayo. Mm -hmm. And when you, once, you, once you go on air, you're, you become a star. Okay. Once you go on air on Tamtam Weekend, you become a star. That's so right. everything was centralized. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then now, with, over time, with me, media pluralization, it became difficult for us because the consumer's attention became divided. Mm -hmm. okay. So yeah, back then it was easy. It was only CRTV. What, you had the state TV. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once you go on air, you're sure to become a celebrity. Oh. That's why you had the Tubanyans. You had everybody that passed on national TV was sure. Radio TV, mm -hmm. you were sure mm -hmm. to become a celeb. Oh. Because everyone's attention was focused. Okay. The, yeah. Okay, so I, I think so. the only intervening variable over time yeah. is the fact that we have a plethora of media up today, mm -hmm. and we do not adapt to the changing times. Okay. But back then, the talent has always been there. Even now, we still have the talent, mm -hmm. but we have to adapt, ad adapt to new strategies and all that. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, I want to talk about music distribution. You know, mm -hmm. not everybody was supposed to, to have a TV. Though, when you go on see TV, like what Mr. Jules just said, mm -hmm. you're sure to become a star. But back then, I can remember getting a TV was difficult. You see. Yeah. So how were they distributing the song? Because even when I was little, I would hear songs that like Matt Zambo that just played, Matt Zambo. Yeah. I, I can still remember it very yeah. well, but yeah. I never saw it on TV. It still sticks in my brain. So how were they doing? You know, so? be, before, before, be very, very few artists even had the money to meet the Don Faz who yeah, was the yeah, main no. producer then to do videos. Okay. So TV just came if you had the spunk to go there. Mm -hmm. Now, they had 10 radio stations who played music. Okay. And getting there meant a new song had come and we were waiting. Mm -hmm. Now, nightclubs were very important. Those yeah. days. Then we had music houses mm -hmm. that every week people had to rush. The one that was the central, they had to rush to collect the tips to yeah. sell in the different MC Paul back then yeah, and all oh. regions. Oh. And people rushed. That's why even the artists could count their money because Petit Pay made millions of a night. Mm -hmm. People were mm -hmm. waiting, anticipating for his songs. Mm -hmm. Each time they knew he was coming. You heard this time that he was coming naked. That's why he would pretend mm -hmm. about because he didn't want people to buy the fake or the, the, the uh, adulterated uh, copyright songs. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, he, that's why he would want you to buy the one with his picture mm -hmm. and sell over two weeks before any people come to. So oh. now distribution was duly another sort of business which were the marketers, like MC Pop Music, yeah. the marketers, and mm -hmm. they were stationed in most regions and their own was to collect music from the studios, Makasi, mm -hmm. and take it to their distribution centers who put in buses and they would get to the different towns and from the different yeah. towns, pirates would pirate them and some would get to the villages. Oh, so it was yeah. very easy to count how many tapes you sold, how much money you were making from MC Pop. Mm -hmm. So that was how distribution. Now, but now getting it popular was the radio stations yeah. had to play 
Okay. We had discotheques, that's how they were called. Mm -hmm. They were at every carrefour, yeah. and they were playing loud music in huge yeah. speakers. Okay. So it was very concentrative to realize mm -hmm. that this December 1988, Imosi is out. Yeah. Everybody had to listen and mm -hmm. sing Imosi mm -hmm. in your own words. Okay. So it was easier then to, to, to distribute songs than oh. today. Okay. I, I get your point now. Now, um, I want to talk about branding. Today, you know, celebrities have to dress nicely. You must have nice hair, makeup. Back then, was there such a thing as branding <laughs> and <laughs> having a stylist? Was it really necessary? Yes. Yes. It, it was even far better off than Yeah. That. Branding was oh. always in part of the game. Yeah, because okay. you, you people do not do, do jelly coils. They did jelly mm -hmm. coils. They did jelly coils. <laughs> Men even <laughs> wore women's hair. Uh -huh. There was this particular, it was new man that came up. Yeah. There was this other, you remember Len that you yeah, Len, yeah. between that mm -hmm. was brought in from the from the, from the, from the Congos. Mm -hmm. and that's okay. it. So yes, there was branding. There was branding. And let me remind you, you don't have a star now. Oh. These people were stars. The only time that the hall, the Congress Hall in Bamenda was broken was because Kassaf was visiting. Yeah, Kassaf. People died. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Each time Lapiro was coming to Bamenda, people died. Right. You understand? Yeah. Because yeah. Lapiro is coming, the radios are talking. We usually have this traditional alo alo mm -hmm. vehicles that will move around town with the posters and talk from neighborhood to neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And you were sure that the Bamenda Stadium would be full because Lapiro is coming there. Yeah. It was done seldom. It was not done every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you saw a star from a distance, you saw this Mesengo Francois from a distance, you had no opportunity to get close to them. Yeah. Mm. Because most of what you see today people are doing on stardom, these guys enjoyed stardom. And they enjoyed money because they were paid well. They stayed in the finest hotels. Okay. Yes. Talking about just... branding, you had artists that stood up, branding wise, someone like Dula. Mm -hmm. For many years, Dula never showed his face. Mm -hmm. That yeah. was his brand. Mm -hmm. That's true. Because his concept was it's, it's pain. You don't you don't see pain, you feel pain. Mm -hmm. So for many years you could not see his face. Okay. That was his brand. But so oh. that was yeah. So mm -hmm. and they had Elvis Kemayo who had uh, the, yeah. 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 Dina Bell with his cap. Yeah, yeah, Dina Bell with his cap. And okay, then, just wearing the cap is his brand. No, there's a cap. Of course, till today Dina, Dina Bell. Bell. Yeah. 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 It's from him. That's okay. to tell you how yeah. impactful his brand was. Yeah. Yeah. So so okay. you. Branding has always been part of the game. Yeah. It's an element of differentiation, demarcation. So. I mean, there's, uh, it's not like everything started today. Okay. No, yeah, I, I still think that in those days, it was... It, it was, was better. It was better. Mm -hmm. it, was, it, was, yes. it was better. I still think in those days it was better because there was another transformation. You remember when the Kotobas came up? Yeah. The young man that danced for him, that's when... Papa yeah, Masia Mungu. Masia Mungu. Yeah. That's the, it was, it, a total mm -hmm. new brand came yeah. for suits. Mm -hmm. We were following those things and mm -hmm. like he said, we had just one place to watch. Yeah. See our TV and... Once everybody was here, I think mm. the next December you realize everybody was trying to dress like them. Mm. Okay. And we're not saying it was better back then because we're nostalgic. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's, based on, it's based on facts. Mm -hmm. Today you, you have uh, high music con con consumption and production, mm -hmm. but there's less organization, less coordination. Okay. Back then things were well organized. I mm -hmm. mean, yes. Okay. When you, an artist is signed for you, a record label, they'll do all the marketing, they want. so it was well structured. Was well uh, now you have independent labels everywhere, so uh, 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 it's yeah. difficult. I let you know, even yeah. there, okay. there, there were concerts that they brought in international at least at least at least once per month in Cameroon. Okay. All these Congolese, mm -hmm. I'm talking about the third mm -hmm. year when they started rising again because they started rising with Kofi Olomide, mm -hmm. Papa Bonheur. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's when they started rising. Maywe, that's why they came here to make their money. Money. Okay. And they were compared with Petit Pay mm -hmm. at, that level. at that level. They yeah. came here every month to make their money. Uh, Chala Mwana, every new African artist. artist we, yeah. we, we were the first people to have television in Central Africa. Mm -hmm. So every artist, the, 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 the Equatorial Guineans came here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They came here to mm -hmm. organize their songs and pass on TV. Mm -hmm. So okay. this uh, Duala was a center. Mm -hmm. That was the center. Yeah. Now, um, if, if I'm able to get the both of you right, back then there was a lot of music back here, like in Cameroon, to the extent, that, to the extent where we, that's Cameroonians back then, didn't have any reason. They didn't see the need to get a lot of foreign songs. I'm trying to come to 80 mm -hmm. train you see? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so what went wrong? Because now there's a lot of composition of foreign music compared mm -hmm. to our own, mm -hmm. and that's why they're carrying this campaign that we have to support our own. So I want to talk about the transitioning. Mm -hmm. what, happened? what happened in between? Why the gap? Before you go to talk about the transition, let me tell you that 80 20 that you talk about is not for now. Mm -hmm. And Even back then, you existed. This is not the fight for 8020. 8020 okay. is a logic for media houses. I have been editor in chief for TV. I mm -hmm. started most of the radio stations in the English speaking Cameroon. Mm -hmm. In your editorial policy, you put what you want. Mm -hmm. The whole government, the radio stations, 
have a law on what to play on no. their TV stations. Okay. It's the way people are taking, taking mm. it now. Okay. You, you, the way you take it is like you're now judging people's feelings of individual mm. satisfaction. Mm. You can never stop me from sleeping mm. with music from no. with your students. Okay. You can force me on something. Mm. Yeah, that's but true. now you can force promoters like Dash Media that you play this and there is this law mm -hmm. of course. that of tells course. speaker, the uh, Cameroonian media, I've yeah. done a lot of those documents, that okay. you play uh, 60 percent of your music is it? 40, 40 percent local. of foreign content the problem we had at that particular <coughs> moment that it was even 60 40 per document mm -hmm. was simply because Cameroon could not provide the 80 we would have yeah, played yeah. all the 80 but we did not have mm -hmm. 80 percent to run all radio stations mm -hmm. okay. throughout 24 so hours so now that is where yes. the error is, yeah. is coming from we don't right? call it error it's a brand new mentality for the new generation because we, yeah. we the artists are not fine okay let yeah, well, me yeah, what the was artists the are not really yeah. fighting for this so before we get to that part I want to talk mm -hmm. about the gap the gap what, what happened to run. yes yeah, basically, I mean, there, there, there are a lot of factors. Mm -hmm. The boom back then, I mean, back then, economically, Cameroon was much more stable. Okay. Then came the economic crisis. So we witnessed a general recession in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. Salary cut downs from most of uh, civil okay. servants and all that. So it definitely has to translate to, mm -hmm. the, to the entertainment industry too. Yeah. So, and then uh, 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 another, another major factor is the fact that most of the so-called arrangers uh, our rangers left and went to Paris. To went, went to Paris. So okay. there was no smooth transition between the mm. older generation. So there were no mentoring people. There were no mentoring. So oh. yes. Yeah. So okay. so that, that that caused a gap, a mm -hmm. huge gap. You okay. understand? Yeah. Even Petit Pays who carried the industry behind his back for many years, he used to go and do his songs in France. Okay. For many in years, in Africa, yeah. So he would, he would go and do the songs there. Mm -hmm. So till the let's say late or early 2000s, yeah. that's when we had a new cream of artists that started coming, people like Jackie King, uh, Longe Longe, yeah. uh, and that's from, that's from Marcus Sade. Uh, the uh, other uh, urban genres were talking late, yeah. to, uh, but, uh, yeah, people like Kutal too were there mm -hmm. for, for hip-hop, early 2000s too. So yeah. Kutal, okay. uh, Kopu and Mr. all that. Lele, we're running out of time. We, no, please, we, one minute. It's yeah. very important. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's where the problem came in. Yes. Jules, um, before, during this period, mm -hmm. what actually br broke Cameroon music is the fact that we were too comfortable with Makusa. Mm -hmm. We were the leaders. I tell you, we yeah. were the leaders. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the rumba had fallen. They now transformed to Zaiko Langa Langa. Yeah, they always We brought in uh, Peña Kos, uh, the rest of those big names, mm -hmm. and I'll tell you why they succeeded if you have time. Mm -hmm. Now, Cameroon has never come back because of the fact that Mm -hmm. Nigeria that did not have any good musicians, mm -hmm. they depended purely for music from outside, they mm -hmm. depended on high life. Yeah. At a certain point, Two Face and a group of yeah. young people transformed high life into world modern music. Mm -hmm. oh. Then there was a huge transformation going on in South Africa when they transformed their Zulu into more international music. Mm -hmm. Till today, Cameroon has not been able to transform Makusa mm -hmm. into world beats. Okay. Instead of us transforming leading Makusa, which is a peculiar song, mm -hmm. we decided to go and do high life mm -hmm. to imitate but, but, Nigeria. That, that issue stems okay. from the fact that yeah. there, there, there is a lack of mentorship. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, it, yeah it's a lack of mentorship because... The trends, you know, no, that's what, what I'm saying. Around, it's a lack yeah. of mentorship because yeah. if, you, if, you, if, you, if you carry out a critical analysis of Makusa back then, the arrangements were standard. Okay. I mean, back then, uh, James Brown came here and he listened to a song. He literally stole a song from uh, Talan Marie, uh, mm -hmm. a song known as Hot Cookie, yeah. and went to the US. It means he took the chord progressions, everything, and went. To, mm -hmm. It means the music was standard. Okay. Yeah, the music was standard yeah. back then. Mm -hmm. So it means that if these elders had transferred the knowledge to the younger ones on how to ap appreciate or apprehend international sound, mm -hmm. these codes, mm -hmm. we would have been. Uh, will have adapted easily. Okay. Now our problem is adaptation. Okay. You understand? Okay. People that have difficulties adapting are people that don't have the right access to certain information. Mm -hmm. Because adapting is people like Dr. Ray started in the 80s yeah. and mm -hmm. they are still relevant today. It means mm -hmm. all they do is just adapt. Mm -hmm. As long as you're going to be in this business, you have to learn to adapt. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Cameroon has actually found it a lot difficult to adapt. We are a society that's adamant to change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to push now. Okay. And then the um, originally, we, okay. We're running out of time, yes. Please, real quick, let's talk about uh, copyright infringement. Because I learned that Zangelowa, for example, it was copied by Shakira, you know, and then uh, a lot of other songs were really copied. Like, Cameroonians were the sole producer and uh, the original creator of so many mm. songs, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, how was it done back then? Because today we see a lot of uh, artists crying, oh, you copied my song, you stole my lyrics, you're not giving me credit. How did they handle such things? 
Um, the, the example of Zangaliwa is not too correct because Zangaliwa was a natural traditional song mm -hmm. that was sung in government yeah, schools yeah. during March Pass, so yeah. they, they don't even own the rights. Oh, um, but, but yeah, it came yeah. from somebody. No, but that's mm -hmm. not, yeah. No, it came from a tradition from some village or somewhere mm -hmm. that you will not know. Mm -hmm. It's like Ambolo, you can okay. trace the person okay. who did Ambolo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they brought it to Lamlight and some yeah. other people took it. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. To me, Jules, maybe you have something to say. I want to stand more on the repair and that. Yeah. Okay. Transforming or getting rights of a work that is not done is not part of me. Okay. Yeah, because okay. I do not okay. see the work. What is it that we have today to be transformed? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think the example which I used was Manny Bango, so Makosa. Yeah, the, the one with Michael Jackson. Yeah. Yeah, Michael Jackson. But they had an other call settlement. Yeah, that's an institution. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to come now to our present day summer industry, right? And uh, permit me to say with this excerpt, um, a couple of months back, we had Mr. Leo. You know, he created his own record label after he left. Alpha by Touch was talking about Lion Productions, and he had mm. two artists alongside himself, Gomez mm -hmm. and Kameni. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden, the two decided to leave the record label, and uh, mm -hmm. he wasn't really pleased. So, on an interview right on Hall of Fame with Dali Nyonga, this is what he had to say. So, I want you all to take a look at it, and then afterwards, okay. you're going to give your comment on it. Okay. This was me being passionate about forging another. There's a difference. Not necessarily business. So the first motive was not business. But for that motive to be ripe, now I needed to start doing business. That's why they were around for more than three years and we only signed contracts in January mm -hmm. last year. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. We only signed contracts a year ago. Whereas they've been lamp production artists for more than three years, all the money, a lot. It's not small money, a lot of money. <clears throat> it takes a lot of money to produce an artist. I was on some seven, six, seven, eight million francs every three months. Wow, it's a deal, right? Every three, four months, yeah. Okay. I have to shoot a video for Kamini, Gomez, shoot for me. Just those three, you're talking about some four, five brick already. Mm -hmm. Promotion and all that. <clears throat> but no contract. That's to tell you how deep my ambition was to forge another. Mm -hmm. But like I always say, life happens, right? Mm -hmm. um, it didn't work like a plant because everything i repeat everything only started going south after we signed contracts it was supposed to make the bond stronger because they have something yeah. so i thought so too i thought i thought so too mm -hmm. um the main reason why i even came up is because i realized i was using emotions to do something that's supposed to be done with proper decisions, you know, mm -hmm. it's supposed to run as a company. Mm -hmm. You know, we even started losing business. We, you could not have some kind of gig with Brazzeries because you're not running as a company or with Kaji and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I needed to put the company together. Okay. And only paperwork shows that Kamini is my artist, or Gomez is my artist. If somebody's calling me from Gabon or wherever, mm -hmm. they need, you know, the services of land production or they need me to, you know, send them Kamini over. What really proves it? If something goes south, the only thing that proves that Kamini is my artist is the paperwork, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So the moment we opened up that paperwork part, everything went south. Did you, you want know? to? Um, yes, they didn't. And secondly, they did not understand. Mm -hmm. Now used to paperwork, mm -hmm. right? That's why I understand, okay? I'm fine. I mean, nobody should worry. I'm fine, mm -hmm. right? But it was more of ignorance, you know. Okay. They're not used to paperwork, and all of a sudden, there's paperwork. They are used to, they are big bro, you know, just doing stuff for them as they are big bro. But funny enough, I was honest with them. I told them, like what I'm telling you now, I told them, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I'm doing this because I feel the need to do to another what was done to me. Okay. So we're going to roll, I'm going to bring you in. I'll spend the money, the time, the energy, my team, every connect I have, mm -hmm. I'll push it onto you. Mm -hmm. From the day you start making the first franc, mm -hmm. you choose whether you want to stay or not. And uh, you started to go after making it. So the moment they started making some money, we had to start doing business. Mm -hmm. And I even told them, I'll give you a contract when you start doing business. So let's push it. And when you start having a structure, we'll do the paperwork. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like it was not expected. But now, 
that paperwork meant control. Okay. I mean, every uh, structure without rules is chaos, right? Yes. Now they have to start telling you, they call you for a show, you have to call, you have to send it to this person. If they need this, this is what you have to do. You have to be here at this time. It's all about order. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a lot of disorder. Okay. And um, because of their ignorance, they misunderstood what paperwork really is. Mm -hmm. I succeeded with Salatel simply because of who I am. Me and Salatel never had a contract. Really? But we respected every, we respected each other from day one to the last day. So the mistake I made was thinking that people would behave same, people would think same. Mm -hmm. You know, not everyone is like me or mm -hmm. Salatel. You know, mm -hmm. and that situation just proved to me that um, because you don't hurt people, mean... don't close your eyes and think people will not hurt you. They will hurt you. Okay. You don't hurt people, it's fine. Mm -hmm. But protect yourself, you know. Yeah, so... And the only protection was the contract. And that's what happened. <clears throat> the first person we took off was Gomez. Um, ignorance, impatience, and... Uh, I think those are the two things that really affected affected them. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, right? Mm -hmm. Whoever they are, if they are fine, I'm fine. Mr. Jules, all throughout, I saw you shaking your head. You know, what's your take on it? Did he actually make a mistake to be so trusting of us? The experience I have with the industry is the most dangerous people are the most ignorant ones. Oh. There's a lot of ignorance out there, mm -hmm. and that ignorance can be lethal. Mm -hmm. Business is, is about integrity, it's about trust. Okay. So what is a contract? If you and I say something, and we agree on something, that's already a contract. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. If people cannot abide by the things they said and everything, yeah. they even, even if you give them any paper to sign they will not but that is the one is different you know verba you have no proof but no 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 when forget you about sign? the proof thing that's why yeah. he said that mm -hmm. he leo i know i know him as salas okay they spent at least 10 years salas spent at least 10 years 10 years developing him as a brand mm -hmm. i spent more than 10 years with jovi oh you understand yeah big artists have a stable ecosystem that's the first thing that cameras need to understand mm -hmm. yemi aladir has been with efizi for the past 10 years mm -hmm. tiwa spent over seven years with Don Jazzy at, at Mervyn's. Yeah. I can g give you, I mean, uh, Wiz Kid was uh, with uh, Banquet. He spent over five years mm -hmm. there. So development, artist development takes a lot of resources yeah. and time. Okay. So our artists need to understand that, that it's an investment, it's business. Mm -hmm. And the problem we have is that we have a bunch of selfish people that get into the business. Okay. That's the, that's the main thing. And that's why it's difficult for these people, usually when they separate, to have a career. Mm -hmm. Because everybody knows that they're selfish. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. For a guy like Leo, who doesn't come from a rich background, yeah. to decide to want to invest in, so young, mm -hmm. in young people, yeah. I mean, that's a laudable... I mean, he might not be the most perfect producer. He might not even have all the resources. But just the fact that he has very noble intentions mm -hmm. and the fact that he struggled with the little resources. We all do struggle with the little resources that yeah, we have. that's very true. So, but we need to work with talents that under understand these things. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you're working with people that don't understand these things, people that are delusional, it will cost you a lot. Okay. I have been, part of, I've, I've been a victim of that. Okay. He too has been a victim of that. Mm -hmm. Personally, I felt like it was too early for him to even start a label. He had to focus on his career okay. because that label thing cost him his career. Mm -hmm. Now he's struggling true. to mend things. Mm. Uh, yeah, okay. because he had to focus on other people. Now he, he, it cost him a lot for the last two, three years. He's been literally off. Mm -hmm. Now he's trying to come back. Mm -hmm. So, but I, it's, it's, it's a wake up call mm -hmm. for the younger generation. They need to understand that people, this is an investment. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's not charity, it's an investment. People invest their time, their money, their resources on you, mm -hmm. and the least you can do is to pay them back okay. by being loyal. Okay. Uh, Mr. Lene, what do you think that Mr. Leo did wrong? I personally would not want to enter into private affairs. Yeah. It's his label, he's the owner, mm -hmm. 
the other singers. I could talk on general music. It mm. happens in every part of show business yeah. contracts. It's very huge aspect. Go to the new edition. Bell Beef Devour. Mm. Go to even the brothers like the Jackson Five could not stay together. Go through. Uh, it's been always like that when it gets to, to group music or, or production. Uh, but what I think in the peculiar, not in their case, but in Cameroon as a whole, is yeah. um, there is this excitement when people start becoming stars that they think they can manage everything. Majority of them. Uh, short term, they do not understand the music business. There's a difference between music business, show business, and show. So a lot of them, when they finally get to their neighborhoods and they pick up some popularity and some couple of uh, views online, mm -hmm. they start thinking that they could manage the rest of music. But music is a very huge industry, very huge industry that has those people in front, those people behind, the marketers, those people who even prepare your mentality for stage. That's why if you get into a situation, most of them, they're now being gloomy, like he Jules, Jules is an expert for this because I know his career he has been there for a long time. Um, people start getting popular. They forget that they did not create those songs. That some people wrote those songs, some people played the music yeah. and they just went and sang. They totally forget some of this and finally fall back and think that they are the owners of this, yeah. being fooled by a public that acclaims okay. them, a public that is also ignorant on how part. music goes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, um, I had Mr. Jules on Hall of Fame and I asked him how he found our entertainment industry, right? And he had a lot of things to say. So I'm going to serve you another excerpt and of course, after which you'll be giving your own thoughts on it right okay ladies and gentlemen so we'll go on a short break when we'll come back we're going to be having mr j on board don't go anywhere this is the hall of fame the best for sure i'm a fan i'm a critic but i'm a music fan most okay. of my camera audience they don't get it yet mm -hmm. and the issue of giving hits I will blame the Cameroonian audience because to a certain extent you guys do not hold these artists like there has to be accountability. What do I mean accountability? If I'm a fan and I'm supposed to consume the mess that you're selling to me, imagine if Brazzers was selling 3-3 export that was flat. Think about that. Mm -hmm. So you have to hold these people resp responsible for everything that they do in terms of creativity you see that the lack of hits is because there's no creativity or do i say no focus because uh there's a vlog as i mentioned the fact that you you need to understand your past your past success in order to be able to reproduce that success some of them just do one thing that pops and that is it it's gone and gone and they, they cannot reproduce that it's because the fans have been you know just you know cuddly with them hugging with them like you know you have to tell people that look man you suck that music where you're doing so you, you, know? you have to we have to see which is why i keep it very brutal on my platform and people get offended that i'm a hater no if we don't do that unfortunately we will go the whole year without a single hit but look at next door they were crying that block this block that how many hits have come out from from nigeria in the past 30 days Hello. Buga. And now we have Adoru Naskam that is coming out. Yeah. But we are still here just comfortable, comfortable. When somebody speaks, they get offended. When somebody talks, they get offended. You know, I don't want to even get into the whole Kosim mess because he knows he's a mess, by the way, in terms of his career. He's not even focused. Now, this is the critical part of me coming out. He's not focused on trying to reproduce some level of success. But who do you blame? Whatever they put you guys, oh, man. Uh, he's the rap, you say but rap he said he's boss? working on his album and the other time was next nine percent and recently he dropped a collaboration featuring um Inos B. Let me ask you something. Mm. How long do you think it takes to drop an album? I'm not in that. Okay, field. I, I could hear the cockroaches in the yes. <laughs> because if you if you are focused on doing what you do, let me tell you. There are, there are artists in America who write songs every day. In Nigeria, they, they, that means that it's a continuous process. Mm -hmm. There will never ever be a time you get on with kids' schedule. In between, he's not doing a song. He might be writing it to record it, a concept. Now, in Cameroon, unfortunately, that is not viable, which is why you see them struggling to come up with an album. Mm. So what do you think is the main reason? Focus. Okay. Not okay. finance, though. No. Some of them say they are rich. 
Oh. Yeah. Mr. Kosi said he's rich. He can give me a million CFA. Oh. He said he's rich. So if you're rich. Okay, me, yeah. real quick, you hear everything Mr. J has to say. The, lack, the, the fact that most of our artists do not really uh, give us the album, there's no consistency, you know? Like, for example, Kosi, like he mentioned, his album Genesis has been on 99% for the longest time. So what, uh, what are your thoughts? Do you have anything to add to what Mr. J said? Um, I have followed that interview, and I think that's what makes this program. One interview could transform a whole program. Mm -hmm. I followed it, and uh, he said a lot of truth. Okay. I mean, and, and the courage to say some of those things is the reason why I'm here today, because we have gotten to that point that everybody, I, I, I didn't think that there were even people like that could, could, could still face facts. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking on the Kosi case per se. There were other things that he said there that were so true. And um, uh, in, that, in, in the in, 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 in album, like I say, I don't like citing out artists. I like talking generally. Okay. Those things are called new generation beefs. It didn't exist too bad those days. You understand? Mm -hmm. I think that's a, he's not the only one who's not done songs or album, but he's got fine songs. Okay. Mili Vanilli did three songs in two different personalities. Mm -hmm. And those two songs sold, they are still selling till today. Okay. Yeah, so okay. every artist has their own philosophy mm -hmm. and they have their own methodology. There are some people who came to the world because they were created as artists from birth. And there's some people who came to the world and watch other artists and fit themselves into art. Okay. So it depends on the background of every artist mm -hmm. and their willingness to, for continuity. Mm -hmm. That's individual. Okay. But I love those who build the continuity, Jan. Okay. okay, talking about continuity, is it very important for artists to come up with albums? Now, Nani is saying that just go with what, uh, whatever suits you best. But mm -hmm. is having an EP, an album, very important? It's indispensable. It's okay. indispensable. Mm -hmm. Name me any big artist, any legend that doesn't have EPs or albums. Okay. An, album, an artist is his catalog. Mm -hmm. That's what makes an artist. Yeah. That's what makes an industry. Mm -hmm. it, an industry that doesn't, doesn't produce. I don't see them as artists. I see them as products. Okay. An industry that doesn't produce enough. Mm -hmm. cannot be competitive yeah the only way for you to be competitive is for you to produce high quality content consistently okay. over time mm -hmm. so we need to produce okay and name, why, why do you think they can't produce from them having difficulties and being consistent because 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 most of the times we're focused we're focusing on the wrong metrics okay. for success you understand mm -hmm. and we easily get carried away yeah. by success okay most artists the big artists that we know the ones that we respect today the ones that we've always respected mm -hmm. have a team music is teamwork mm -hmm. that's what these young guys need to understand okay the moment you start thinking that it's all about you you fail okay so all the artists that we praise today bernard boy even bob marley back then they, they had their crews mm -hmm. bob marley had the whalers mm -hmm. he used to write some of his songs with uh, peter tosh and all of those people okay. they used to do those things together it's normal mm -hmm. we're not inventing anything mm -hmm. the problem we, we have is that most of our artists are selfish you are so full of them. Yes. Yeah. You're selfish. You don't want to share the glory with, with other people. Uh -huh. So it makes it difficult. So if you don't want to share the glory with other people, they'll, they'll let you be. And if they let you be, you will not be productive enough. Okay. So we have to learn to understand that music is teamwork. Mm -hmm. It's teamwork. That's, there's, there's the creative aspect to the, to, 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 to the teamwork. Mm -hmm. And there is a business or marketing aspect to okay. the teamwork. Okay. So an artist must... We, learn, we, we need to take ourselves very seriously. Mm -hmm. I think we're not serious enough. Okay. That's the difference between us and Nigerians. They take themselves mm -hmm. very seriously. Okay. At the level of talent, we don't have anything to, to envy anybody. Mm -hmm. But I think we lack discipline, we lack focus, and a whole lot of other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's, that's where they beat us hands down. Okay, I, I get your point. Thank you so very much for that, for that contribution. Now, you as an artist, you're, though you are the forefront, though you are the celebrity, do not forsake or do not minimize those who make up your team. They are very, very important, right? And talking about team, well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say with this wonderful collaboration is coming from three of Cameroon's young finest artists. We are looking at Gomez. Oh, you know, the other time he got angry, they didn't give him credit. So, Manny Franny, future Gomez and Vivi, we serve you human. Take a look.
Je veux tout, je veux tout, je veux tout, je veux tout. Pagna buri buri fami, avec ton buri viens me béni. Kaya buri is a blessing, kaya buri is a blessing. Can you get me feeling honey? Let me top it, top it honey. Let me lick it, lick it honey. Je veux ton coco ba, coco ba, coco ba, coco ba, coco ba, coco ba, coco ba. Compliments, so, yeah, my man, yeah, my man. Really? Mm. <laughs> he didn't say nothing to me. Okay, but it's fine. It's not too late. So, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Go on, go on. I'm waiting. <laughs> You're hot. You're pretty. Yeah. I know. Thank you. You're sublime. What is it? Mm. I it. told you. I said you were dressed like a princess. That's why I said. Oh, thank you, honey. That's why you're occupying that. So much like space. That. I'm matter literally. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. J, you're welcome on set. It's a thank pleasure. You, you know, from you a distance, me. I saw the way you were like, I need to go there. I have a lot to say. You know. From a distance. <laughs> I saw you behind no, me. I, I mean, I was soaking up what they were saying. And okay. At least, it's always a good thing to understand that there are people who. Mm -hmm. who know what you are, you are trying to do and who have been doing it for yeah. a long time like my brother here Mr. Jules I, mm -hmm. I am the loud version of him okay so mm -hmm. that's why you saw me I was like man okay. mm -hmm. let me get on <laughs> okay so talking about getting on I want to talk about rap book rap yeah so let, let's start with since you just got here tell us the origin rap music Jovi, we talk about rap or book book rap? Let's start with the rap. Don't move to book rap. Well, rap started in New York. Okay. Rap was uh, was a way of you know people to the blacks mm -hmm. to express their frustrations at the system. Oh, okay. Now, rap is a, a component of a whole lot of things, rhythm and poetry. Mm -hmm. But when we talk about rhythm, we used to have what we call b boy, DJ, and MC. All of those things were rap. Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. So most people confuse that, you know, they just think that it's just writing lyrics mm -hmm. and going to the microphone that is rap. No. Okay. It's, you know, it's just part of that. Mm -hmm. The culture, hip hop, you yeah. know. And then coming to Cameroon, you know, per se, we have the Mboko rap. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people get uh, upset when I say, man, Jovi this, Jovi that. But mm -hmm. that is the creator of Mboko rap. Okay. Mind you, I didn't say Mboko. Mm -hmm. Mboko. Rap. Okay. Because before, we know of La Peru de Banga, we know Mboko, we know yeah. a whole lot of, you know. Mm -hmm. So he brought that together. Okay. He created that genre. Mm -hmm. So yes, that's where we are. Okay. So um, aside from Jove, who, which other artist raps really well that you can really vibe to, Mr. Jules? 
Black Monster is doing a fabulous job. Mm -hmm. I think he's coming up. Yeah. Uh, that's one shade too. That's that's good. That's mm. pretty original. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there are not too many of them, but those are the ones that usually. That's why female rappers in Cameroon. Let, let's start with you, Mr. Um, Mr. Do you J. have female rappers in Cameroon? Why? Female, ask her, ask her, ask her. Mr. J, ask her. Ask her, ask her, ask her. Ask her. She, I mean, she stands she okay. out. She okay. She, she, she stands out among uh, the female okay. acts. Uh, Tila, Tila Tafari. She okay. Oh, just okay. Yeah, but I mean, you know, when. I go through like a hundred songs per day and most of my songs are from I listen to the female look at Africa. We'll talk about rap female rapping in Africa. I don't see any FMC from Cameroon Come standing on. toe to toe. Oh. So when you hear me saying she's okay, okay. Mm. I'm not disrespecting her, you know, you know, you know, they're fond of taking my things personal. <laughs> I'm not disrespecting us. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. not disrespecting Tila and uh, mm -hmm. who else is rapping as a female. Mm -hmm. But they are okay. Okay. It's not something wow. No, mm. it's okay. Mm -hmm. So far. Okay, so yes. far. Very well done. Well, definitely I'll be coming for you, eh, Mr. J. Like, how can you mm. say uh, 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 Mami Bakala in Cameroon is just okay, Mr. Jules? But it's, it's, I mean, it's, I think it's, it's, it's a good criticism, you understand? People mm -hmm. need to step up. Okay. People need to get out of their comfort zones. Mm -hmm. So that's what it is. It's just a wake up call. Okay. When he says she's okay, she's okay, Papa, or who? Mm. So who's standing in front of her? Okay. It's not, we're not talking Cameroon. Okay. We're That's why he said he emphasized it. We're talking mm -hmm. Africa for mm -hmm. now, not even the world. Mm -hmm. for Africa. Okay. So she she doesn't stand out. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's a fact. You don't argue facts. Yeah. We have to learn to respect facts. Okay. That's the problem that we have. We 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 sugarcoat things a lot in Cameroon, and that has uh, uh, institutionalized mediocrity in Cameroon. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why people like him and I, when we talk, people think we are too hard and. No, no. Okay. But it's it's important. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We, we do not spare the road as the child. Very well then. Let's talk to Naka, Mr. J. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now over time we've seen our artists complain that they don't give them their their worth. You know, Kosi said he was giving a T fifty five thousand. And then uh Jesse Kubo went and complained that so that come instead asked him to be the one to pay them, you know, when he went to get mm -hmm. his own royalties. Mm -hmm. Annie and Zua the, the, the same thing. Like mm -hmm. how do you think they are helping us? Um, you give yourself worth as an artist. Hmm. This issue of royalty is not just by just because you're an artist that you expect mm -hmm. X amount of no, yeah. you give value to your craft. Okay. Once you put value to your craft, the rest can come. Mm -hmm. Bob Marley is dead and gone, he's still receiving royalties from what he did. And if you look at Bob Marley, Bob Marley gave value to his craft. Mm -hmm. Now, when you come to Cameroon, unfortunately, I will have to go with the old school artist. Okay. Those are the people that if they complain about their royalties, I'll be like, ah, but these new school cats? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so talk less of Kosi. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. I'm, I have nothing against that, brother. Don't get me wrong. Okay. Copo can be complaining. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. Copo, Copo was that spark that started something. Mm -hmm. If you don't like the guy, but that's just what it is. Copo started a movement which metamorphosed to what we are seeing today in, in, the, in the bigger picture. Yes. But then after that, what have they done? What, what, what value have mm -hmm. you, an artist of today? But man, I say artist. Because we have artists, we don't. We have few artists in Cameroon. We don't have, what we have is musicians, mm. artists, musicians. Yeah, you understand. Mm -hmm. I hope I think my brother understands what I mean by an artist and a musician. Please throw more light to read so I can just <laughs> <laughs> let me let me let me throw a little bit. You know, an okay. artist is that person, that individual that can create. Mm -hmm. You can fuse. You can bring this to this. You create something beautiful, something okay. different. Yeah. A musician is that person that keeps copying and reproduce redundancy. Okay. You keep doing the same thing. Yes, you change the name of the song to this to that. But to a critical mind, you are doing the same damn thing. Mm. Okay. Nothing ever change. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say there are few of them. Okay. Now this generation, we're talking about artists, artists, mm -hmm. creative minds. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are few of them. Okay. Yes. Uh, Mr. Jules, now, uh, Mr. J said these artists are getting this set amount from Sonakam because that is what they are worth. That's what they deserve. No, the, right? the Sonakam issue is, is, is a very deep 
issue. It's, okay. a, it's a systemic issue. It's not on the artist's fault. Okay. It's, a, it's, a, it's a political thing. Mm -hmm. and, and it's very complicated. Okay. Yeah, it's very complicated. And it's been there for over decades. Mm -hmm. So it's systemic. Okay. It's an unfortunate situation for our artists. Uh, but if, if you com come to think of it, how many of them are registered with those collective rights organizations? Mm -hmm. How many? Okay. So most of them are not even registered members, mm -hmm. but they want to be paid. Mm -hmm. Most of them are registered with maybe foreign collective rights bodies like uh, ASCAP or, or SASEM in France and all that. Yeah. But for, as for Son Sonacam, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. It's difficult for Sonacam to actually, especially with the new wave that's essentially online, how do they track oh, all those things? Online. They don't have the resources to do those things. Okay. So okay. it's just unfortunate that they find themselves in mm -hmm. such, a, uh, such a system. Maybe mm -hmm. over time, yeah. we'll, so that can I sign some strategic partnership deals with okay. SASEM and all that. Yeah, and things will get better from there. Things will get better. Okay. For, 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 now, for. now we see Happy the Philanthropy to introduce a new genre of music, the Mbole. Like, what do you, do you think Happy, it's... Uh, yeah, but there are people that did uh, Petit Boza and all that. People yeah. that were there before Happy Happy. But he's trying to redefine it. He's trying no, he's to not the one more. that tries to redefine it. <laughs> oh. he's, he's just one of the guys that stands out. I mean, he's okay. not, I mean, Bole has been there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Petit, Petit Boza is a bigger Bole artist than him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But so, what's the future? Don't, don't be carried by the the The, 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 <laughs> the ambiance. Uh, it's, 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 the ambiance very yeah, well. The ambiance, don't be carried <laughs> by that. Because <laughs> it's, it's disrespectful when you say that to the Mbole community. True. Oh. You could have been of Petit Boza now. Okay. Petit okay. Boza is a, is a much more bigger artist. Okay. When it comes okay. to Mbole, yeah. Okay. Thank you for the correction. So, do you um, do you think he's going to stand out? Do you think he'll stand the test of time as compared to Bikusi, Makosa? You know, we're talking about the lifespan mm -hmm. of this channel now, Mr. J. You, you know, when you talk about Bikusi and Makosa, mm -hmm. the history of Cameroon has, the genre has always been. Makosa and Bikusi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And understand that Bikusi came as a rival to Makosa. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. You know, we talk about the Bikusi, we talk about the, 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 the Owundos all the mm -hmm. way to the Equatorial Guinea. You have mm -hmm. the Ekan and then you have the Bikusi. Yeah. Ekan is more spiritual. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bikusi now is the normal life of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it became the whole vulgar lyrics and stuff like that. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. but you, this genre, I don't think is going, like you said, if you're saying he is, he's trying to do something, but he's not even, he's not. When you talk about that, mm. a, lot, a lot of us look like, man, mm -hmm. you, you, uh, you don't really understand this. <laughs> Mr. Issue. J, I'll be correct. I come on, uh, no roast me no, now. No, come saying, on. You ask me what he's trying to do when mm. he goes, no. No, I'm not talking about happy now as an artist. I'm talking, talking about, about the, the future. Movement, yeah. Yes, the future. The do you think? movement needs a whole lot of research. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. New. There's nobody that would, for example, we talk about Bikuti, the, the Ani and Marinze. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Who would study Bikuti and bring it to the to today? One person did that in rap. Okay. Never yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah. The Ted Brule kind mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah. Yes. After that, how many people are doing it? Doing it, yeah. It takes a lot of deep what? understanding mm -hmm. to do what Jovi did with cash. It's okay. crazy. It's deep research. Mm -hmm. You understand? You have to go back into time, mm -hmm. study the sound. Yeah. And understand. then reproduce and yes. bring it, bring the okay. excess. Yes. So, but in your own genre, rap. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's unfortunate that in Cameroon we don't recognize that kind of talent. Mm -hmm. We just trivialize it. It's not, yeah. it's, what it did is... So it's, I, I it's, it's, it's genius, you understand? Mm -hmm. But most people don't recognize it. Okay. And a society that's not built on merit, mm -hmm. hard work, mm -hmm. all of these values, mm -hmm. we are going to produce average artists. That's why we can place Jovi alongside average people. No. In a society that's fully organized, mm -hmm. like in Nigeria, you don't mix MI with any kind of person. You don't mix Kanye with any kind of person in the U.S. That's where everybody knows their place. Okay. But here, people will just say things and they just mix you like that. They just take you and mix you. Okay. And then when you come objectively and you lay down the criteria like what he does most of the time, mm -hmm. people get upset. And because we're not used to mm -hmm. hard facts, okay. we're not used to merit. Okay. You understand? If mm -hmm. you used to merit, if you, most of us went through boarding schools, yeah. there's hierarchy. There's, yes. I mean, they are grand for school, they are grand for school. That's true. You understand? Yeah, even while you yeah. graduate, you come out. Ex exactly, you're big and all. You know, yeah. you know the system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, but now the, everything seems to be pretty messed up. You understand? Okay. So okay. We, we easily mix things. And I am, I am part of those that believe that there's hierarchy in everything. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's merit in everything. Okay. Yes, if people, you don't mix people like that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. You have to, we have to learn to, to respect genius, to respect talent. It's very important in Cameroon. Okay. Yes, we have a lot of Bijoka people making noise online yeah. because they, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a situation that suits them. 
when we are all mixed up in the same category, when yeah. people get mixed up like that. Mm -hmm. But for people that work hard, that's what Bona, you look at most geniuses, they're not tolerant to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when Bona talks, he talks down on you. Yeah. Because he knows how much work he puts in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he will and not let you disrespect his hard yeah, work. Yeah, exactly. Very true. And I we come from a society where we easily disrespect, disrespect Samone too. Mm -hmm. Easily disrespect you Bona. Say as we play. Easily disrespect uh, Jovi. Yeah. That's, how, that's how we are. There's because we're space. just a, 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 a set of bitter people. Okay. We're okay. just taking our frustrations on the wrong people. Okay. On the weaker ones, I would say. Okay. Um, Mr. J, I wanted to talk about the way forward. Now, you've mentioned, you've cited a lot of problems, a lot of, you know, our downs and stuff. And how can we make this industry better this industry <laughs> this present artist this one is okay. team okay market yeah. mm -hmm. genuine not you want to do a, an album you start the war with this person just so you can no. drop your ep no. no 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 like uh kosia and victor can get it, you know no none of that no. okay team build yourself up with the right team team that is there to understand that it's not about money Mm -hmm. It's about passion. Okay. Unless we have that. And you know, you, look, I can look at an artist and I'll tell you that, hey, this man is this man a damn driver. I can tell you. And a whole lot of them are Okada drivers too. Mm. Because they I don't know, the, the in, internet is a beautiful thing because you can make and break things online. Mm -hmm. Now, but when you confuse the importance of internet mm -hmm. to music, yeah. mm -hmm. because out of Cameroon, artists are making a killing streaming. Streaming. Mm -hmm. But in Cameroon, Cameroon, they are still relying on sales. It baffles me when you come to Cameroon and they, it, it, an artist is talking about people are not buying my, my, my project, this and that. Buy my album. Do you know in the 1970s, a Cambi Brian sold 20,000 units? Mm -hmm. wow. Back then. Back then. His second project, 25,000 units? Mm -hmm. Back then. And then the. Four million upwards. Mm. Mm -hmm. That was more than two decades ago. Yeah. Okay. Today, I dare you, if they're all angry, I want an artist to come to Mr. J and say, Mr. J, show me facts. I sold 10,000 copies of my project. Yeah. Mm. I, you can jot it down. I'll give them five million. Whoa. Any artist. Okay. I'm serious. Okay. If you can show me. Mm -hmm. By the way, I know how to query things that you've sold that much mm -hmm. in unit rather than streaming which is like most artists around africa today is streaming it's streaming mm -hmm. it's streaming okay and artists will drop 24 hours he's at buga dropped 24 hours it was almost at 4 million yeah mm -hmm. right now looking at 48 i think 50 mm -hmm. or so yeah. million views yes so you think that he worries about that so let's come back to Cameroon. The, today if an artist can an, an artist cannot do that by themselves Wow. Unfortunately, we have a whole lot of artists that they want to do everything, everything by, by themselves. themselves that's mm -hmm. it. Build a strong team. When I say a team, it's not supposed to be 10, 20. No. Get you three, four people that will understand your vision and to propel you. Because some of them get to me like, I don't know what to do. Or this or that. No, you are, not, you are not looking at the right direction. Exactly. You are focusing on the, the little, little noise no, nice. around you. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there are artists making the killing okay. across the border. Yeah. Yeah. So... Okay, over to you. How can we make this industry better? Basically, like what he, like, like what he said, I've been saying it for, for, for decades now. It's about team. Mm -hmm. Get yourself the right team. Mm -hmm. First of all, learn the music business. Mm -hmm. All these big artists that you see know the music business. They understand it. Because once you're a businessman, I'm a businessman. And when I see him, I know he's important in what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. But most of our artists are not trained to recognize talent. So you cannot be in business without knowing business. Mm -hmm. They have to treat themselves seriously. Most of them are not business people. They're just artists. They're not entrepreneurs. Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because I, I want to assume most of them are independent. Uh, they, are, they, are, they are signed independently. So some have their own labels and all that. They're trying to push your stuff by themselves. So the first thing when you're getting into the business is to understand how the business works. So you can be able to discern you can be able to distinguish between the good manager and the bad one, between the good decision and the bad one, between the good marketer and the... If you don't know those things, you cannot succeed. Okay. That's... Keith Daniel is not the most talented artist in Nigeria. No. Uh, no, it's just that he understands the business. Mm -hmm. our, artists, our artists are ignorant when it comes to the business. That's the problem. Okay. Because they will know that this guy knows what he's talking about. But they will not come and see him. Never. That, that, that's not it means you're not a business person. So you pride. say it's pride yeah. in it. Like, it's, it's pride. Yes, it's pride. Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. And we don't want people that challenge us. So most of our artists have taken time to get rid of 
people that can actually bring out the best in them, people that can challenge them, people that are critical thinkers. Mm -hmm. They've gotten rid of those people. And once you get rid of a system that doesn't have a check and balance around, it it's a system that's bound to fail. Okay. So most of the, 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 the people surrounding our artists are not competent. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to say that. You can see from the way they, the, the marketing is, is, is carried out, the marketing yeah. is done and all mm -hmm. that. So if we take ourselves seriously, we'll first of all learn the business, the music business. Okay. Then now we'll surround ourselves with the right resources mm -hmm. to help us at, uh, attain our goals. Okay. That's just the main difference between us and Nigerians. Okay. They are very smart. People like David Doe, Whiskey, mm -hmm. Bernard, look at their teams. They are very smart. Okay. And they don't change their teams anyhow. Yes. They don't change. Dead 15 years. Yeah, the same yeah this is the same. They do this with the same manager from Dami Duro to the same manager. Yes. Look at our guys. Mm -hmm. How many of them have the same team? Okay. It, it tells you that they're unstable. Okay. But yes. now, why do you think most of our artists quickly run out of the record labels? Because they come into, they, they are delusional. Oh. They are delu they, they, delusional and they don't understand the business. That's why I said, learn the business. Mm -hmm. Yes, once okay. you learn the business, you understand basic business economic principles like investments yeah. and return on investment. Mm -hmm. Somebody's investing his time, his money, his resources on you. Okay. And it's by common, common sense that he gets back the money. Of course, it's in, business. In That's very but true. now you have to be a delusional somebody to expect somebody to invest in you. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, these guys run out of deals two, three years later. I asked an artist, why will you even sign it? You know, why will you sign a two, three years deal? That's a bad deal. A good deal is five years. It means because by the time the guy starts to make his money, it will be by the four to fit here. That is so true. Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. But anything less than three years is so difficult. So by the time it's right, it's no longer with you. And most of them might not want to renew the contract. Exactly. Okay. So our guys okay. just come to sign and they want to. And it's not helping them. Okay. You don't sign short-term deals and you don't, it doesn't work like that. Long-term, 10 years contract then. But he, years he has been there. No, a deal. A deal okay. has clauses. Okay. And clauses can always be improved upon. Okay. I mean, the salary Mbappe has... In, in, in Paris Saint Germain, that's not what he had when he came. In. True. When he came, he proved his word and he said, Okay, guys, see, true. I'll go home. I didn't want to pay me this. Old. Are you guys? It changed <laughs> certain classes. Okay. Okay. It's just common sense. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go and start your own stuff if you don't have the resources, if you don't have what it takes mm -hmm. to, to, to run a record label. Okay. A record sure. label it entails a lot of, uh, of know how that's and true. resources. Yes. Some Most of, of these guys don't even. Have, they don't have one tenth of what it takes to run a record label. Mm -hmm. They don't have an idea. Mm -hmm. So you must not create your own record label. Okay. You can still stay there, mm -hmm. but you can change and, and, and learn and change some of the clauses. Okay. That's all. Okay. Because the bigger you are, once you prove your word, once you add value, you can sure. always renegotiate your deal. Mm -hmm. so, the the yeah. record label might even be afraid to lose you the most. Okay, what happens? Okay, yes. well, that's true. So, now, Mr. J, the other time I brought to you, yeah, you know, from the conversation on Facebook, people were like, oh, he's always criticizing, you know, how, what has it done? What contribution has it done? You know, so now, if you're given a chance, how would you make our entertainment industry better? What First of all, I, be, I don't want to cut you. I just, I just want to make it clear. Yeah. People who talk like that are people that are average minds. I'm sorry to say that. <laughs> because it's like saying, like, asking, what has he done? Yeah. It's like saying that a president's advisor must be a former president. Oh. Or like saying that Languages' advisor must be a, a billionaire. It doesn't make sense. Okay. No. There are people that, are, that can give you ideas mm -hmm. and, and, and help you. You even become, use it to generate income. Yeah, of course. That's, that's yeah. what happens, you mm -hmm. understand. That's so true. you're not going to tell me that uh, one of uh, Bonita Shako's advisors are media owners. No. It doesn't no. make sense. Yeah. Or, billionaires like, or billionaires like him. Or billionaires like him. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. So can we just have to learn to understand? To respect ideas. Okay. You understand? Life okay. is a marketplace of ideas. Okay. And if we don't train ourselves to know people that are intelligent enough, mm -hmm. we are always going to be lagging behind. That's why Africa Dark. is lagging behind. Okay. Okay. Mr. J, real quick. So, on that note, he said, Yes. Let me tell you something. Um, what have I done for the industry? Mm -hmm. Dear Cameroonians, let me just say this. <laughs> I'm not the kind of person that will be doing my things and I come and tell you I'm doing this. You don't blow your trumpet. Okay. But I'm doing something. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. I want people to, to realize, I want, like you said, worth. I want what I'm doing to speak for itself. Okay. I want someday, some couple of years from now, I'm like, man, you want to do this? Hit Mr. J up. You want to do? That is when I will talk. Okay. I don't, all of these damn drivers are just, I don't owe any Cameroonian artists <laughs> or these people oh, who I don't even that. understand <laughs> the music model of business. Yeah, you know, okay, you know, okay. Let's say I'm criticizing. I'm, I'm not always criticizing. Okay. If you listen to what I say mm -hmm. with an open mind, yeah. with an, <laughs> you will pick out a whole lot of things. The problem is, they say I'm criticizing because I'm, I'm too vocal. 
Okay. You I understand? get a point. Yes. yes. Okay. That's why they see it as bad. Mm. Mm. Okay. So, um, oh my, I would have loved to have you both for the longest time. But we're, we're working on time, you know. <laughs> okay. uh, real quick, before we go, any last words? You know, anything you want to tell the public? Build your team. Yeah. Artist, today, please, when you start, don't focus on money. No. The money will come if you focus on the right things. You understand? Focus on making yourself, give yourself that, 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 that time to evolve. Okay. Learn. Grow as an artist first. Okay. Don't try to be, I want to take 3,000 pounds for a show with this. No, 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 no. Okay. Because we all know that you don't bring that value in. Yeah. Focus on what you do first. People are only knowing, some people are knowing Burner Boy just recent years, but Burner Boy started a long time ago. People are knowing Fire Boy just recent years, but Fire Boy has been since 2006. Wow. It's around 2015 that he started, you know. Yeah, making so waves and stuff. Focus on evolving first. Okay. When you evolve, mm -hmm. the money will come, okay. the respect will come. But when you want to put that, you want to demand people to respect you and money pay you before you evolve. Mm. Okay. <laughs> it's a sad situation, my brother. <laughs> Mr. J, real quick, please. Yeah, basically, like, 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 like he said, mm -hmm. money is a, is a, by, it's a byproduct of value. Okay. You understand? We have to focus on providing value. That's the most important thing. That's what Nigerians did before they took the sound to the global scale. Mm -hmm. They focused on variables they could control. And the only variable you can control as an artist is your craft. If you spend time on your craft, working on your craft, fighting your, your craft, you can get there. There's no magic to it. Mm -hmm. And you can only do that with a good team. Okay. That will help you keep that focus. Okay. You understand? So mm -hmm. it's important mm -hmm. for artists to learn the, 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 the tips and tricks of the trade, yeah. learn music business. Okay. Because it's going to help you mm -hmm. work with others very well. Yes. Most of the issues we're having is because most of our artists are not trained to work with others okay. because they don't understand how business works. Okay. So learn business. Yes. Have a team. Have a team. You understand? Yes. Focus on your art. Focus on providing value. Okay. And the rest will happen naturally. Okay. Accept criticism. Accept <laughs> criticism, of course. Yes. Mr. Accept J has to edit that's me. Part that's part of it. No, 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 no. You can criticize me all you want. Okay. It's part of the package. You get angry. Pick what you're saying. Yeah, yeah the most you say in it. Get used to it. Yeah, get used to criticism. It's okay. Get used to it. It's part of the thing. Okay. Thank you so much, gentlemen. It has been a pleasure having the both of you on set. Thank you for coming. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so we've come to the end of today's edition. Remember, patience is key. Yes, work on yourself, work on your craft. Do not focus on money. Money will come over time. For now, build value and uh, give respect to your team. Make sure you have a good team. That's why I want to give a shout out to my team. Thank you so much, Mandela. I see you, Elijah. Thank you, Didi. Well, three shout out to you, Brighton. You are a darling, Sammy, and Mandela. Thank you guys so much. Thank you very much, and especially Mandela. I really appreciate you. Okay, you are. So, do not forget, Hall of Fame is that platform where if you want to know everything there is to know about the extreme industry, the music stakeholders, the important people, you should never miss it out for anything in the world. I am Danny Yoga. It's a bye from us to you. Action God, big up the RP family. Mr. J, I see you. I know some artists don't do this. Yeah.